Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Single Malt Review. This time we've got another rum, and as requested, it's the Appleton 12 Year Old. And it's really, really, I think, rather good. Um, Jamaican rum, of course, and I think it's just about the Jamaican rum, which you can peg other Jamaican rums against. I think the Appleton Estate, I think 12 Year Old, but all the other ones as well, as the, um, the benchmark for Jamaican rum. So. About time we had a wee look. Hmm. Now it comes out of the Ray and Nephew distillery. Um, if you keep up with your Caribbean distilleries, which would be a hard thing to do because there is not a lot of information about it online. The uh, databases on that sort of thing is very thin compared to Scotch distilleries. But um, one thing you can do is get this just about anywhere in the world because it's available just about globally. Um, which is a good thing, really. First off, that is a gorgeous colour. It's mm. a really deep, bronzy gold. It is a gorgeous colour, but sadly, I believe it's probably coloured, so ah. we can't trust it. Right. Um, not that it wouldn't have a good colour on its own, but mm. what that is, alas, we just don't know. So, now we will we'll have to assume this is coloured and right. chill filtered. So, never mind. Um, but one thing this rum does do so much better than so many others is because it's, I think it's a, um, it's because it's from Jamaica rather than one of the Spanish colonial islands and that shows through in their method of aging their scotch. So many rums are made in what's called the Solera style. So they're Solera 15 years, Solera 21 years and it doesn't really mean what it says and it can be a bit confusing and I think slightly dishonest. The Solera system is where they have a big sort of rack of barrels and every so often they take some liquid from the top one and down to the next and so on and so on and so on and so on and then you can sort of make up an average age of everything that's in there but what it means is that you're getting effectively a what would be a no age statement blend if it was scotch whiskey legally every single time you bottle. And I don't think that's a really outstanding way of doing it. But Appleton Estate, owned by the English, over in good old Jamaica, um, that's aged properly. So that is 12 years old. No Solera systems, just 12 years old. So you can trust it. And you can really taste the difference as well. Hmm. So we should probably get going. Hmm. Mm. It really is a good rum. The aroma is huge. It's a big, intense. Yeah. It's uh, almost apricotty. The usual sweetness. molasses, brown sugar, but I think they primarily age in bourbon because there's huge vanilla, huge toasted coconut, no small quantity of almond hazelnut. Oh, it's really rather lovely. Very, very inviting stuff. And at 43%, it's certainly not overwhelming. Um, and that's 3% better than almost every other off-the-shelf rum as well. So not quite 46, but better than most of its peers. And big flavours of brown sugar, first and foremost, honey, and a few mixed nuts. Some mm. like pistachios, almonds, that kind of thing. Toasted nuts, mm. especially. Quite heavily toasted nuts. Yes. Very distinctly. And again, lots of bourbon character coming out of there. They don't say which barrels they use. As with most rums, they say, well, in this case, absolutely nothing beyond that it's 12 years old and 43%. Their 21, which is very good but astonishingly expensive these days, will tell you quite a lot more about how the whiskey is made. And uh, their, I think they call it their Master Blender's Legacy, which is also really quite good quality, but again, extremely expensive compared to the 12 years old. Um, that's got a bit more on it as well. That's a no-age statement uh, blend that's uh, at least alleges it's quite old. Mm. Right. This really is lovely. It's not hugely complex, but really few rums are. But what it is is very, very bold, very, very inviting, warm. It's not overly strong. It's really sort of just perfectly balanced. They're ready to drink. Um, it can cope with a bit of water or with a bit of ice. It doesn't mix tremendously well like some rums do because it does have so much flavour of its own. It can begin to taste a bit weird once it, say, hits 
pineapple juice or something else you want to mix with your rums, which I, I don't disagree with, but this is really not the rum for that. This is a good sipping rum, as they like to market themselves mm. as, and I would I would stick with that. Um, that's it's far more rewarding as such a thing. The only thing I add to this would be a cube of ice on a particularly mm. warm night. I will put some water in just to see if anything changes, but it's not my usual practice to put water in Appleton 12. <sighs> That's just a little softer now. <sighs> just a few more floral elements coming out of it with that water. And on the palette, that's actually made the oak express itself a little more clearly. There's some quite good stavy oak characters there. A drier oak than you would expect from rum. Really, it makes the whole thing a little bit drier. Maybe even a little bit more complex. Maybe I should have been putting water in all this time. Who knows? I guess it depends what you're into, but... Mm. As for the other Appleton brands... Oh, I didn't give you a look. There we are. But again, don't trust it because it's coloured, so never mind. Um, as for the other Appleton brands, I've mentioned the 21-year-old, which is good, but astronomically priced. And the Master Blender's Legacy, which is also good and mostly astronomically priced. And then you've got the regular Appleton, the uh, VX, then they do a 6-year-old as well. Given the difference in price from the 12 year old to these other younger versions, I almost wouldn't bother with the younger ones. Not only is this one of the only 12 year old, genuinely 12 year old runs you can buy, it's also actually one of the more affordable. And so it's so much better, I think, than the younger versions, even of Appleton. I just would stick to this one because there's so, so much more for you there in the bottle. And it's a wee bit stronger too. It's got 3% extra, I think, than the. Uh, younger versions are only at 40%, so that's my recommendation, and it really is just effortless to recommend. There's a few things out there that you just can recommend wholeheartedly because they're such a little investment and they're such a good quality product um, that uh, I, I think just everyone would like it. So I, I wholeheartedly recommend to people that haven't tried the 12 to go out and fetch some because it's just such a beautiful rum to have. and. Uh, nowhere near as much of an investment as some of the um, older fine rums can be. Mm. So I suppose I should give it a score and it's going to be a pretty good score. I think I'll give this one an 82 which is an astonishingly strong score for a rum you can pull off the shelf in any given liquor store or duty free really depending on where you are. Um, I probably would only have to go 500 meters from my house to find a bottle of this and that's saying something for such a good quality spirit. What do you think? I'll mark it highly. Also a 77. You can taste of quality, the sweetness, the benefits it's gained from me aged 12 years. Mm -hmm. Yes indeed. So that has been Appleton Estate 12 year old Jamaican rum. Another rum from the Single Malt Review. Goodness me, we can't claim 100% malt content anymore, oh. not by a long shot, but never mind. We won't start calling it the Single Rum Review, not just yet. At any rate, thank you for checking in, and I hope that has been useful to anyone wondering about Appleton 12. We will have something uh, hopefully equally fascinating, if not equally good, coming up just around the corner as we head into a last Christmas. We'll probably get some tinsel out there. I don't know. I might wear a hat. We will just see. In the meantime, Slanger, keep safe, and we will see you shortly.